Welcome to the Calsoff podcast series. This is your host Mark Rodriguez coming to you uh, for the first time in 2017. Today we are going to be talking about VDI um, and our topic for today is the VDI era of efficient resource management. I have today with me uh, two people from our team, uh, Sandeep Thinle who is a senior principal QA engineer. Hi Sandeep. Yeah, hi Mark. Um, Sandeep, it's good to have you on the show. He has uh, a quick brief about Sandeep, he has close to 9 years of the storage domain experience in testing, um, enterprise class backup and restore applications. He has worked on testing of different NAS boxes like Hitachi NAS NetApp and Hitachi Unified Platform. Here with us at CalSoft he has also worked on different file and block serving protocols like SIFS, NFS, ISCSI, NDMP, FTP. The second person we have today uh, on our show is uh, Shefali Nerula, a QA engineer here with us at CalSoft. Hi, Shefali. Hi, Mark. So, a quick brief about her. She is a quality assurance engineer here with us at CalSoft. She has worked in the core NAS domain for a little over two years now and has worked on various protocols like SIFS, NFS, NDMP, ISCSI, Samba, etc. So, once again, it's great to have you guys on the show. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. So, so let's get into what is VDI first of all. Uh, we can start off with that. So, uh, Mark, I would like to take that. Uh, so, uh, VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Today, uh, I will describe what is VDI and why we should uh, use it. The main reason to uh, discuss the VDI is that there, there are a lot of confusions about VDI. So, basically, VDI stands for uh, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. It is a term used to describe users accessing a full desktop operating system environment remotely. The desktop uh, is a virtual machine. Uh, VDI is a centralized desktop uh, delivery solution. Uh, the basic concept of VDI is to uh, store and run desktop workloads including a Windows client operating system, applications and data in a server based uh, virtual machines or VM in a data center. So, uh, this allows a user to interact with the desktop presented onto a user device via remote display protocol. So, uh, in VDI uh, deployment, there are two models. First is uh, static and persistent virtual desktop and the second one is dynamic or non-persistent one. So, throw some more light on, uh, on that, Shefali. Sure. Uh, in static mod mode, uh, in static mode, there is a one-to-one -one mapping of uh, VMs to users. Each user is assigned with a designated VM. Since VMs are commonly stored on a, a storage area network or a SAN and uh, it executes on a server, a large number of users can lead to significant SAN requirements. However, in a dynamic mode, uh, there is a only one master image of the desktop stored. All user personalization profile, application, etc. are stored separately from the desktop. When a, a user requests a desktop, a VM cloned from the a master image is combined with the user's personal data and applications dynamically delivered to the user, based, uh, user device based on roaming profiles. So it simplifies the overall VM management by reducing the number of desktop images maintained. So then why do we need VDI? What is the business benefit for that? So, so I will take that question, Shifali. Okay. Since virtual desktops delivered by VDI are VMs running in a data center, enterprise IT can realize all the benefits of centralized desktop management. Strategically, VDI enables enterprise IT to achieve certain things like deploy desktops in virtual machines on secure and centralized server hardware which improves business continuity, data security, and desktop lifecycle management. It also enables a user to access to run one's desktop and applications wherever the user may be, which offers desktop location independence and improves business productivity as well. It also transforms enterprise IT deployment from infrastructure focused model into a user-centric approach, which improves user productivity. Okay, very interesting. So, uh, so is virtual desktop uh, infrastructure a generic term used for desktop virtualization? Uh, yes, Mark. To some extent, it's true. Virtual desktop infrastructure, also called as VDI, refers to the process of running a user desktop inside a virtual machine 
that reside on a server in the data center. It's a powerful form of desktop virtualization because it also enables fully personalized desktops for each user with all the security and the simplicity of centralized management. VDI enables customers to streamline management cost by consolidating and the centralizing desktops while delivering end users mobility as well as the freedom to access virtual desktops anytime from anywhere and on any device. It's also important to understand however that VDI is only one form of desktop virtualization. So a legacy way of talking about things was calling it terminal services, right? Um, is terminal services and VDI different from each other or are they the same? Uh, yeah, uh, terminal services and VDI are different from each other because uh, in a RDS environment, multiple uh, users would access a single environment which, uh, which could be customized on a per user basis but resources were not dedicated to a particular user. In a VDI environment, each user either accesses their own centrally hosted physical PC or VM or they can access a cloned VM. In a RD RDS environment, a number of applications has uh, issues working on RDS and also resources are not dedicated per user. VDI enables applications to be run as if they are on a local PC, removing any issues caused when running in a RDS environment. In a, a VDI environment, physical CPU, memory and disk capacity can be allocated to a, a particular user which stops one user's actions affecting other users. Okay, so we've, uh, we've spoken about the what and the why of VDI. So where can VDI assist? Um, like when a user's local device is incapable of running the latest operating system and applications. Um, uh, second is a secured uh, remote access, especially for emergency access using a, a non-company PC to access company resources. Uh, hosted images are securer than providing local desktops useful for offshore workers accessing company resources. Okay, are there any more? Yes, Mark. Uh, VDI enables the core image or images that everybody uses to be updated, even the OS, quickly and uh, cost efficiently. This allows companies to take advantage of new OSs and applications quickly uh, without the usual delays caused by cost and planning. Um, Users can be provisioned a new desktop each time which reduces support costs as the issues that build up due to ad hoc software installation and removal do not exist. And the last one is uh, data and VDI infrastructure can be deployed in a geographically dispersed data centers enabling disaster recovery even for PC hardware which for many companies would all too quickly recover should a disaster happen to an end user office. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Shafali. So, uh, we've obviously, CTOs have been talking about uh, BYOD uh, for many years now. So, does, uh, does VDI support BYOD devices? Yes, Mark, absolutely. Uh, you can use your laptop or mobile as an end device. VDI has given this solution as well to use your laptop or mobile. For example, BYOD users connecting to a VDI desktops can access a full suite of applications that are installed on the virtual desktop computer. This VDI virtual machine is controlled and managed by the organizations which means that IT can assure that all application instances are properly licensed. In this scenario, users retain control of their own hardware. It doesn't matter what devices they use as long as it can run the VDI client software and they can control, they can connect to the virtual machine. The BYOD challenge however is security. Many users don't properly manage the security of their personal devices. When using a VDI with your BYOD, the, department, the IT department ensures that the VDI virtual machine is locked down and protected with the latest security software. This eliminates the security risk of the BYOD device and this essentially makes them a dumb terminal. Interesting. Um, you guys also touched upon uh, clones used in VDI a little while ago. So what are the different types of clones um, used in VDI and what are the benefits? There are two types of clone. 
uh, first is full clone and second one is link clone a full clone is an independent copy of a virtual machine that has nothing with the parent virtual machine after the cloning operation ongoing operation of a full clone is entirely separate from the parent virtual machine however in case of link clone a link clone is a copy of a virtual machine that shares virtual disk with the parent virtual machine in an ongoing manner this conserves disk space and allows multiple virtual machines to use the same software installation okay so what are the differences between the two then so a full clone is an independent virtual machine as i said with no need to access the parent a link clone must have continued access to the parent without access to the parent a link clone is simply disabled a link clone is made from a snapshot of parent in brief all files available on the parent at the moment of the snapshot continues to remain available for the link clone ongoing changes to the virtual disk of the parent do not affect the link clone and changes made to the disk of the link clone does not affect the parent as well so you obviously spoke about these two clones what are the benefits of each so benefits of full clones are they do not require an ongoing connection to the parent virtual machine overall performance of a full clone is same as never cloned virtual machine if you are focused on performance uh, you should prefer a full clone over a link clone and what about link clones link clone on the other side are created very fast a full clone can take several minutes if you compare with link clone if the files involved are large a link clone however lowers the barriers in creating new virtual machines so you might swiftly and easily create a unique virtual machine for each task you have another benefit of link clone is that they are easier to share okay what all of this tells me is that businesses will probably increasingly turn to vdi in the coming years but uh, what impact do you think this will have on their wider it ecosystem uh, to answer your question mark uh, i would say networks are a key point to consider here vdi places significant stress upon the wans bandwidth and the resources due to the amount of data being transferred between the server and the desktop operating system throughout the working day if the network is unable to cope with the pressure and if it fails to provide adequate availability to the applications the applications are liable to perform poorly or they can simply fail the functioning of vdi is directly affected due to the limited bandwidth resulting in users experiencing problems like delayed mouse movements and keystrokes when it comes to productivity user demand a seamless desktop experience so we are talking about network right um, how can these issues be prevented uh, so sandeep i would like to take that sure uh, the solution lies in being able to manage the flow of traffic over the network and to enable this businesses need to have a transparent overview of exactly which applications are running over it and how much resource Uh, they each consume from here bandwidth can be prioritized to uh, serve the more uh, business critical applications significantly minimizing the uh, chances of them crashing performance is aligned to the needs of the business user vdi has numerous benefits of uh, businesses that choose to utilize it but in order to maximize its efficiency companies need the right tools it's of a primary importance that the flow of virtualized traffic can be viewed in a, a transparent way and that the business critical uh, virtualized applications are therefore are also highly visible with multiple apps sharing the virtualized environment there needs to be a way of managing the competition between them and prioritizing the ones which are considered more important okay keeping all of these things in mind what are the holistic overall benefits of vdi uh, so uh, i have identified few major benefits of implementing vdi uh, first is uh, utilization of same image the first benefit of vdi is that uh, desktops uh, can use the same image the os as well as application that are installed decrease decreases organizational and support costs Uh, so the second benefit is uh, more options for expensive desktop upgrades while an investment in server hardware and storage infrastructure may be required keep in mind that uh, everything will be hosted in the data center 
therefore there may not be a need for a huge collection of standard pieces in the office third is uh, management of a single os can reduce cost because everything is hosted in the data center admins will have to install drivers patches and applications only once and every user depending upon that image benefits from the update fourth is uh, troubleshooting problems is easier today uh, support staffs have a tedious task of running out to physical pcs this has been reduced by different models of vdi as uh, images can be accessed from uh, linked workstations uh, any user facing hardware trouble on their usual systems can go to another one and access their uh, data and applications simply by logging in and having their policy based apps and rules pushed to pushed to them and lastly data is more secure another benefit uh, is that the data and images images will be in a safe zone in the data center you can now utilize standard data center tools to manage the security okay thanks guys for uh, telling us so much about vdi now obviously there are going to be different solution providers right should we talk about them now yeah sure we'll talk about it so can you start off yeah there are uh, different vdi solution providers uh, major providers from the list are uh, vmware then citrix and microsoft the solution that vmware provides is vmware horizon view and vmware view provides remote desktop capabilities to users using vmware's virtualization technology a client desktop operating system typically microsoft windows windows 7 8 and 10 runs within a virtual environment on a server the major components of vmware view are view connection server view administrator view composer agent view client remote desktop services host and vsphere and vmware vcenter the second major provider is citrix zen desktop citrix zen app and citrix zen desktops an application and desktop virtualization product that delivers complete windows desktops and applications across virtual infrastructures The major components of six Citrix Zen desktops are delivery controller, database, virtual delivery agent, storefront, receiver, studio, director, license server, and its proprietary hyp proprietary hypervisor. And what about Microsoft? You said Microsoft too, right? An interesting uh, part of Citrix provider is they support all three major hypervisors, VMware's. ESXi, vSphere, Microsoft Hyper-V and their own proprietary hypervisor. Very interesting. Uh what about the Microsoft components? So Microsoft has their own solution for VDI infrastructure. Uh they provide the solution with their enterprise server operating systems. The components of their VDI solutions are RD Web Access Server, RD Gateway Server, RD License Server. SQL Server, RD Connection Broker Server, RD Virtualization Host, and RD Session Host. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Sandeep. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, obviously, these sound like a lot of jargon right now, but we are going to take up the actual components of these providers in our later podcast. Keep a keen eye out for that. Okay, now let's look at a different aspect of of VDI. what are the testing tools that can be used to test vdi from a qa perspective we need tools that can validate different vdi deployment scenarios with varying organization requirements login virtual session indexer commonly known as login vsi is an industry standard testing tool for virtualized environment login vsi is a software product to test the performance and scalability of windows based virtualized desktops by simulating users it can successfully predict validates and manages the performance of virtual desktops environments login vsi makes it easy to load test benchmark and plan activity to improve end user experience and productivity for even the most complex virtualized desktop environments login vsi test performance using virtual users so your real users benefit from consistently great performance so what all can you do with uh, login vsi So with login VSI you can 
predict the performance of impact of necessary updates and upgrades. Secondly, know the maximum user capacity of your current infrastructure. And lastly, understand the end user's perspective on performance. Login VSI works in a Login VSI works in any Windows based virtualized desktop environments including VMware's Horizon View, Citrix Zen Desktop and Zen App and Microsoft Remote Desktop Services. Shefali, can you please talk about few test scenarios you're using Login VSI? Yes, Mark. Uh, I have listed some typical test scenarios that one can uh, start against their VDI deployment using the Login VSI. Uh, first is uh, deploying around 2000 full and uh, linked clones. Second is you can boot sto storming of all VDI VMs. Third is uh, create pool of VMs from thick provisioned eager zeroed or thin provisioned master image. Fourth is uh, exiting or shutting down one e ESXi host and make sure VMs get migrated. This uh, for VMware uh, HA configuration. Fifth, fifth is uh, increase data store run size and test creating VM clones. And the last one is uh, using login VSI to log into 1500 VMs and VDI heavy 24 hour sessions. Okay, brilliant. So, what are the considerations for a VDI deployment? What all do you require? VDI is so far a core component of desktop virtualization and it satisfies specific computing requirements and scenarios with deployment readiness and flexibility. Remember that uh, different wo workers require different level of access to virtualized desktops. This needs to be uh, considered while, pl while planning for VDI. Uh, notice that uh, VDI while flexible does require more server hardware uh, resources than the traditional session based remote desktop approach. In general, uh, VDI requires an upfront investment in uh, server and storage hardware to store and execute all needed VMs. To ensure users able to access virtual desktops, the network supporting VDI needs highly available since for a user no network connectivity means no virtual desktop accessibility. Generally speaking, the network bandwidth requirement is also expected relatively higher to support VDI than uh, that supports RDS. On user experience, uh, one should not expect a re remote desktop or a virtual desktop to perform exactly as well as a local install desktops. The fact is a, a rich client will always provide a superior user experience to that delivered with VDI. Shifali, is there any problem statement that some of our listeners can relate to? Uh, yes, Mark. An enterprise IT manager always uh, look for a cost effective, easy to manage solution uh, that can provide an easy method for large scale deployment of customized uh, user desktops targeting to a certain users or a group of users. Many organizations continue to provide individual workstations to end users with pre-installed uh, Windows or Linux operating systems with set of user applications. Managing hundreds and thousands of PCs scattered all around the office premises, supporting a large number of local and roaming users, updating operating systems and applications, resolving hardware issues requires IT su support staff of significant size. Such organizations many times practice a distributed desktop management approach. In absence of a centralized de desktop management solution, the administrative and management tasks become difficult, resulting in higher administrative management and support cost. VDI simplifies IT management, increases security and control of end users while decreasing costs by centrally delivering desktop services. Thanks, Shafali. So, if somebody is looking uh, for a service provider to implement VDI into their ecosystem, why would they come to a service provider like us? Someone like us who has been a partner with VMware and has worked on various VMware oriented solutions, certifications and other programs understands the VMware ecosystem very well. Calsoft has been into the storage virtualization and networking space now for about 18 plus years and understands the integrities involved in this domain 
with work done into development test execution certifications and other areas and hence would be in a better position to provide a 360 degree view to it so obviously we have a leg up from product companies that's what you're saying yes mark okay so that brings us to the end of the podcast today uh, we've we've learned a lot about vdi we've learned about how we can deploy it and um, specific use cases uh, sandeep would you like to encapsulate our discussion today and and take it away sure mark as discussed earlier vdi works well for some scenarios and there are times vdi may not be the most cost effective way to achieve certain goals in order to succeed vdi must be implemented with a clear objective specified completion criteria and well defined strategy without these things a vdi project will simply fail okay thanks sandeep thanks mark so obviously uh, we mentioned a little while ago that we are going to be uh, tackling the different providers of vdi in an advanced uh, podcast in the near future so all our listeners please look out for that uh, guys it was great to have you on the show today thank you so much for being here thank you mark thanks for having us here thanks mark so for all our listeners if you have any feedback for us about this podcast or, and if you'd like to hear something more in the, in our upcoming series uh, you may write to us at marketing@calsoftinc.com at thank you and have a great day bye